Hi everyone, my name is Tim Brown. Welcome back to my Apple Podcast. Today I want to revisit the subject of app subscriptions. Uh, during a recent episode, I talked about, or rather posed the question, are app subscriptions a ripoff? I didn't get any comments whatsoever on my post, so I'm going to revisit the topic once again with a more affirmative stance that basically indicates that yes, app subscriptions are ripoff. I'm going to explain why that is and how I think app subscriptions should be offered to the consumer that is that is in a way that is fair to the consumer so let's examine the app subscription market in general so we're, we're taking we're looking at ios here right we're looking at the app store and there are billions of apps in the app store now you may be asking yourself why are there billions of apps well it's pretty simple because the apps do not do very much other than you know these very specific functions some of them have a lot of features inside the app that help to fine tune and provide elaborations in terms of what you can do with that very specific function. But for the most part, they're specific functions. They cannot do that many things. So what you are, what you have to do as a consumer then is buy another app that enables you to do the other things that the, that the one app that you bought cannot do. So for example, I create art. My background is as a fine artist. I have two fine arts degrees and I was trained as an illustrator. Um, that may not be familiar with mo most of you, but as an illustrator, I was trained to be um, knowledgeable of various different techniques so that I, I could be well-rounded as an artist so when I'm provi provided with a a problem to solve visually that I had I had enough command of all the material techniques and resources at my disposal that I could respond in the appropriate manner whether it is digitally whether it's through oil painting a temper watercolor what whatever um, so I understood that the very nature of the sort of mixed media aspect of my field and what it took for me to be able to survive as an illustrator. Well, the app market is actually pretty much the same way. You should think of each app as a medium that does one thing well. And you should think of other apps as the ability to enable you to accomplish things that you otherwise wouldn't able to be able to do with that one app. So like I said, I'm a visual artist and I like to take advantage of all the things that apps have to offer in terms of exploring my creative potential. Uh, inside iOS. So, for example, I like an app called Bizarre. Bizarre is a, a collage maker, a photo editor app. Um, I've been using it for, I don't know, probably a good eight years, and I've seen it evolve and, and add more and more features uh, along the way. Um, and yes, it's been able to do a lot more than it did, say, seven years ago or eight years ago, um, but it still pretty much has a very limited and specific function. Um, it's not an app that you use for drawing and painting. It's primarily an app that you use for combining layers, cutting shapes out, combining shapes, uh, using adjustment tools to adjust them and so forth. Uh, if you wanted to use a, an app to, say, do a lot of painting or coloring, um, then obviously you would use another app. So I would do what I could do in Bizarre, and then uh, when I was done, I would then export it out and then import it into another app, say like Procreate, which does enable you to do a lot of painting, has tons of brushes that you can use. Of course, there are other apps too, like Pixelmator and so forth. Uh, all these apps allow you to do a lot of things, but at the same time are constrained in terms of the specific things that the app's designed to do. Uh, there are other things you want to do, for example, let's say if you want to animate your photos. Well, then you go to another app to do that. So you have a static photo, you can't animate it in Bazaar, you can't animate it in Procreate, you can't animate it in our studio, but you can import it into Plotograph and animate it that way. My point is that you need to be able to use multiple apps to be able to do multiple things. And that's my point. In the same way that you subscribe to Adobe or, or any other company like that, that's, that that offers a lot of services via the many different apps that it offers, including the cloud-based based services that comes with it, likewise, if an app is going to be offered as a subscription in the app store. It should not be offered using the same constraint and limited model that it currently has. Basically, offering you an app that does a very specific thing, even if they are offering a lot of things per month, like some additional filters and so forth and so on, and they keep rolling them out you know, monthly, even though you're probably only going to use maybe a tenth of what they're actually rolling out because they really don't have any substance to them. You can't compare that to... A typical subscription model. It's just not. It's not fair to the consumer to take a model like Adobe, where you can have access to all these incredibly, you know, rich and, and uh, advanced and complicated apps that enable you to do so many different things. I mean, you can't compare a model like that to a model that the App Store is offering, where you're just downloading one app that does 
one specific thing, granted, it may do it really well, but one specific thing, which really should fall under a paid model, right? Or maybe a paid model with, um, or, or a freemium model that comes with some in-app purchases. It's, it's ridiculous to take a model like that and then just throw an app subscription model on top of it uh, with the assumption that it's going to be offering you the same type of services that your typical subscription model uh, company would offer. I mean, it's, it's simply not fair. They're not offering you that much. What I think a subscription model should do is that a subscription model should offer you access to multiple apps. What I don't, what I do not understand is why a company would charge me a subscription fee to use an app that essentially is no different than a paid model or a freemium model and, and convince me that they are offering me more by just offering some regular updates every month that really only amounts to like some some filters or some added features. Um, basically features that would be no different than what I would get from a paid model when a developer decides to issue you know, a major upgrade. It's, it's just simply not justifiable. Um, and I don't know what you guys are thinking out there. Again, I haven't gotten any responses from my last episode, so maybe you're okay with spending five, ten times the amount of money that <laughs> you should be spending. Um, now granted, you know, I, people think that, oh, well, why is he coming out with this video? Uh, he doesn't even support developers. <laughs> That's funny. I have a channel. <laughs> this channel right here has reviewed numerous apps for free. I have more people coming to my site asking questions about their apps than actually going to them. So to accuse me of not supporting developers, I think is kind of laughable. Um, I support developers a lot. Actually, I support them so much that I spend most of my time on this channel celebrating the work that they do. But at the same time, um, I genuinely use apps because, not because someone's paying me to talk about them, I use them because I genuinely find them to be valuable to how I want to do things. Um, that's why I call it my, my Apple Podcast. It's, it's personal to me. You know, I, I just share with you what benefits I get out of using them and hoping that maybe you can get some benefit from it too. So that's my take on this whole app subscription model. <clears throat> I think that if a developer is going to offer you that model and charge you every month or, or every six months or, or every year, they should be able to offer you access to multiple apps, not features that they're handing out every month. Like you take Plotograph, for example. Now, Plotograph is a pretty cool app. I mean, I, I love it. I use it all the time, to tell you the truth. Um, I think that they have a pretty nice product as one app, as one app. I think this is a, a, a developer that deserves to be paid a good price for purchasing their app. And I think that, <clears throat> honestly, I think they would be better off following a good paid model. Like they came out with their app and they said that they were gonna charge $19.99 for it. You know what? I would pay for it. I would pay the $19.99 for the app flat right, uh, outright, as long as I got all the updates for free. What I do not see as being worthwhile is paying say $4.99 for the app and then finding out that I have to pay $4.99 every month and I still don't even own the app at the end of the year. That's really just, not, not just quadrupling, it's like li literally um, um, <clears throat> 10 times, 12 times the price that I pay for the app outright. It just doesn't make any sense at all from a financial standpoint to the consumer as well as the services that you're getting. Now, as I mentioned from the outset at the very beginning, Every time I want to really do something well, I have to rely on multiple applications. It's just that simple. Uh, there's no one app that can do everything for you. As a result, that app should not be charging you a subscription fee. They, just, they don't offer enough. Even, even as talented as they are, I mean, there are some beautiful apps out there. Video Leap is a wonderful video editor. Probably one of the best designed video editors I've ever seen. Not necessarily in terms of features, but in terms of its user interface. Combined with the features that it offers, I mean, these developers rock. I mean, these are also the developers that came out with Inlight and, and PhotoFox and all these other great editors, uh, uh, applications. The problem is they're charging subscription fees for them, and it's not worth it. I mean, it's really not worth it to charge a subscription fee for every single app that they offer. That's a ripoff to the consumer. I'm sorry. I mean, if they were going to legitimately offer a subscription fee model, they should give the user access to every app that they own. So if I'm using Video Leap and I have, say, a photo inside Video Leap, and I want to add some really cool effects or, or editing tools that's not built into the video uh, to Video Leap, I should be able to import that thing into 
in light of photo fox and then bring it back into the video editor um, that way I'm getting the benefit of all of the apps that are developing without having to pay extra that's how an app subscription model is supposed to work and right now I'm not seeing anything out there that even remotely resembles that on iOS and it's a ripoff I mean it just truly is a ripoff that's my thought on the subscription model and how it should be used that's my rant for now well, I don't even really call it a rant it's just something that's just been on my mind I think that you really 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 need to think seriously about this model um, and what it does the, not only the short term but the long term impact that this will have on your user experience in terms of the value that you should be getting as a consumer and what the app should be delivering. Uh, my name is Tim Brown. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Check me out next time.